power of Grayskull. If you're not sure that saying, you can Google it. Adversarial simulation slash emulation. So emulation duplicates the thing exactly as it exists in real life, and a simulator mimics the basic behaviors of a device. Or in our case, the adversary and how they might attack an organization and some of the tactics and techniques that they might leverage. Let's dig into this. We're gonna break this up into multiple videos. So we'll talk about introduction, the overview of teams, and then we'll get into what is breach attack simulation slash emulation. We'll understand the tools, and then we're gonna get into actually simulating with real demos where we audit, see if we can detect the tactic and technique being leveraged against us, and then we'll move into some preventative capabilities. I'll do some things like living off the land as well, Anyways, it should be pretty interesting. The goal here is to validate the gaps, address, and retest. Let's get started. Introduction. We all know this. No vendor is going to provide 100% security effectiveness 100% of the time. Protections will fail. And so we've lived this. We've got assets with endpoint detection and response and advanced malware protection, maybe proxy and DNS protection all these controls and plays, but we also have things on our network that may not have an agent installed. And so we're using some network-based controls to maybe minimize our risk to those devices. And they could be a thermostat, a camera, it might even be a printer on your network. All are targets for the adversary. Now, if you're advanced enough, and I say this because I still see a lack of capability here in the industry, is that you could baseline and understand the behavior of the network and look for anomalies over time. So if you're lucky enough to have that capability, fair enough. And then you have services or workloads that also have capabilities that might be installed on those workloads to help mitigate risk. And again, there's network functions and that might be leveraged here as well, but you also are gonna have something at the workload level. But you're gonna find in some use cases that you're not gonna be able to deploy an agent on every single workload. It could be based on the vendor and the warranty of that vendor is void if you install any type of application on the system. Maybe they have an SLA that, that needs to be met. Maybe it's a legacy system, but there's always reasons why you can't install something somewhere within the environment. And so what happens is even though you have these controls in place, the adversary finds their way in, they're able to bypass the control and they make havoc, right? They start moving laterally within the environment. Hopefully maybe you have some detection capabilities to see this, but the bottom line is, is bad is going to happen. And when it does, the adversary is going to use a bunch of tactics and techniques in order to be successful in the organization. This includes things like spear phishing, attachments, you might have some defense evasion, privilege escalation, credential access, exfiltration, and lateral movement. These are just some examples of some of the tactics and techniques the adversary is going to leverage against you. Now, do your controls stand up against these? Well, that's what breach attack simulation is going to provide us. Some very detailed insight in how the adversary operates within the environment and how they might target us and our ability to defend against it. So when that happens, it's game over. Nobody wants to be in this situation. And so the, the goal here is to minimize risk. And we want to elevate ourselves into threat informed defense. And I think threat informed defense is part of what I believe is advanced persistent defense. The bottom line here is that we're going to have maybe some isolation or some control within the environment. If you're able to get these in place, they're significantly valuable because you certainly reduce the overall blast radius when an adversary makes their way in because you're not going to defend against 100% of everything. And so maybe you got breached one asset, but lateral movement is contained but they do have access to one workload and maybe that workload has protection mechanisms on it and the adversary can't take advantage of it. And maybe it can't also communicate to every workload that might be on that segment. Maybe it's restricted to only communicate to the services that it's offering. So in essence, what happens here is, is the adversary is stuck. They can't move around. Now you still were compromised but the adversary has limitations in their ability to navigate the environment and wreak havoc. And I believe what this does in turn is build in time-based defense. It gives you more time 
to detect the adversary might be operating within the environment and therefore the ability to evict them. All right, as we get into this, let's just talk about the Pyramid of Pain for one second here, just the level set. We all know that we've been focused on these low indicators to mitigate risk, hash values, addresses, domain names. And we still need to do this, but the adversary can very quickly change a hash value. They can obviously change an IP and or a domain name. And so these controls can get bypassed very, very easily. And this is part of the pyramid of pain. And the goal here is as you move higher up in the stack, it makes it very difficult for the adversary to overcome. And therefore we invoke pain on the adversary. And so the goal here is to move up to that TTP level, not ignoring the other levels, but making sure that we have some focus at the TTP level, the tactic, technique, and procedure level to truly understand the adversaries that might be targeting us so we can build in the right defensive capabilities that we require. Some of that's going to be preventative. Some of that's just going to be able to detect. But either or, you need at least at a minimum a detective capability here. Now, attack is a framework that allows us to understand the adversary's tactics, techniques, and the common knowledge based on real world breaches. And so the good thing here is we learn a lot about the adversary. It's globally accessible. It uses an identifier so we know exactly what we're talking about. Nobody is misunderstanding if it's initial access or privilege escalation. We know what tactics being used because of the identifier and same thing with the technique and sub technique. So the goal here, again, is to focus on adversarial's perspective, the who, their goals, the why, and the methods, the how. And we can use this in multiple different ways. We can use this in red teaming, gap analysis and assessments, adversary emulation, and we're gonna do this today. So ultimately, we wanna move from those lower levels up to those higher levels from a defensive perspective. If not, we're gonna to continue to be breached. And even when we get to those higher levels, unfortunately, breach still exists. But we're going to be able to minimize the risk to the organization significantly. Now, I'm not saying ignore hashes, IPs, or domains. These are low-level defensive capabilities, and we're still going to use them to get rid of the noise. Host, network, and artifacts, tools, and TTPs, tactics, techniques, and procedures are those higher levels. So what tooling is the adversary using? What is the tactic and technique that they're trying to drive towards? Defenders need to know their adversary. So we tend to take the approach to look at news and feeds and start adding hashes and jumping through hoops to minimize risk. I'm not saying that, ignore that completely. Because if you can just add a hash or some indicator that minimizes your exposure, that's pretty easy. And most technologies is going to feed that in automatically anyway. What I'm saying is, is that we need to get to those high levels of understanding the adversary and how they operate within the environment. So we know what to look for and ultimately prevent in case of compromise or potential compromise or make it very difficult for them to be successful within the environment. Breach attack simulation provides us the opportunity to really test our defensive capabilities and then ultimately build out meaningful controls based on the adversaries that are targeting us. That's the ultimate goal here, and this is where we start to level up. Now let's talk about the teams for a second here. We've got the blue team. These are the defenders. These are the folks that build the security posture for the organization and constantly are fighting the good fight. They leverage a toolkit of capabilities. Think about next-gen firewall, endpoint detection response, email, web proxy, DNS protection, uh, network-based and analytics. It goes on. There's a lot of stuff these teams do and they try to integrate and operate it. And then they move into advanced risk reduction with orchestration and automation. And as we know, there's machine learning and artificial intelligence that helps feed and augment to support this team to hopefully start to level up our defensive capabilities and keep up with the adversary. Now, some of the activities, we've got user and device, network cloud, workload and application monitoring. We have network detection response and endpoint detection response, vulnerability management. You got extended detection response, patch management, incident response, forensics and investigation, security operations management and security awareness training. This team is drowning. Right, they're busy. They're doing a lot of things day in and day out. And they perhaps don't get the credit they deserve. 
Now, red teams, they're the offensive side. Now, they're not the bad people, but they act as the adversary. And the goal here is to simulate real-world attacks and test out our security posture. Now, they leverage a variety of tools and methodologies as well, but the goal is to find weaknesses in our defenses. And then they create a report and really give us a, a better overall understanding of where our weaknesses exist and where we might need to focus on. Now, some of their activities include vulnerability scanning, penetration testing, social engineering, physical security testing, wireless network testing, application security testing, exploit development, breach attack simulation, and then threat intelligence research. Now, purple teams is interesting. It's not a new team. It's actually the blue team and the red team coming together. So we got the defensive and offensive side working for an organization, leveraging cyber threat intelligence and building out a system where both red and blue work together and understand the overall goals of the organization to drive towards a security strategy that aligns to those business outcomes. This also enhances communication overall because the teams are now working together. It's not the red team going off and performing red team exercise and then providing back a report. The red team understands the defensive capabilities of the organization. The blue team understands where the red team is focusing on. And we work together on this. And this improves the overall security posture for an organization. So again, the goal here is to understand the adversary. And we're going to leverage cyber threat intelligence to do that. And then we're going to emulate slash simulate the tactics, techniques, and procedures to test that posture. That's the red team here. And then identify and remediate gaps discovered during the emulation slash simulation. And, and this is the blue team now kicking in and, and taking all of the in, insight that we've learned through that exercise and building in the controls needed. Now, when we get into adversarial emulation, we got to gather threat intelligence. We need to extract the techniques. We need to analyze and organize, and we need to develop the tooling in order to drive towards that outcome. And then ultimately, we're going to emulate the adversary. And so when we gather threat intelligence, we want to determine the adversary of interest, like who's targeting us. Then we want to identify any post-exploitation details. So do they open a shell from an exploit or maybe do brute force attack? We want to check out any tooling or aliases or other campaigns the adversary is associated with. So there's some research that's happening here. We need to determine the time frame. How long is this going to take for us to execute against? Emotet would be an example of software that an adversary might use. And in this case, Wizard Spider, in fact, does use Emotet. And they're a Russian-based, financially motivated threat group. And they are known for the creation and deployment of TrickBot. Wizard Spider uh, also has a diverse arsenal of tools. And they do conduct ransomware campaigns against many organizations. And they don't stop with just major corps. They actually also target uh, hospitals. So again, we really get to understand the adversary here and their capabilities. Now we extract the technique. So we identify behaviors, we collect information and create supporting documents for the plan. We identify the tactics first, and then we move towards technique and sub-technique. And this is team effort. There's nobody keeping secret, trying to do stuff on their own. This is something the blue and the red team do together. And here's an example of MITRE ATT&CK. If you're not familiar with MITRE ATT&CK, I encourage you to, to do a quick Google. This is the Navigator tool, and we looked up Wizard Spider, which is the adversary group we've been discussing. And you can see we've got initial access, execution, persistence, privilege escalation, and then there's sub-techniques that are captured here as well. But you see there's no reconnaissance or resource development, or at least nothing identified. Now we're going to analyze and organize. So now we want to understand their objectives, their motivations. We want to determine the why, the what, and the how a MITRE attack is going to help here. And once we do that, we can now organize this into phases. So we know now the adversary uses initial access, execution, persistence, privilege escalation, defense evasion, discovery, lateral movement, collection, and then exfiltration and impact. And there's details there as well, right? Those were the tactics and the techniques, for example, for privilege escalation is valid accounts. Well, that means they must have harvested some credentials some way. 
right? That maybe it's a spear phishing campaign. Regardless, they were able to get valid accounts. So one of the mitigating capabilities could be here is not only training the teams that are at risk here about spear phishing and potential risk in email, but maybe add multi-factor authentication. So again, if we go ahead and execute and, and simulate or emulate these capabilities, we can really find out how we stack up against the adversaries capabilities and our defensive capabilities. Now we're gonna develop the tools. So what tools can be used to simulate the right behavior? So are they open source or commercially off the shelf? Do we create something such as command and control or delivery capabilities? What about creating the payloads and simulated attack infrastructure? Then we're gonna emulate the adversary. So we might have to set up the attack infrastructure, C2 servers, domains, install and test. And then we're gonna emulate and drive toward their motivations. The goal here is to act like the adversary. So don't be jumping in and trying to ram this test through as fast as possible. That's not the objective here. The objective here is to do low and slow. We wanna make sure that we're not triggering any alarms. We wanna act like the adversary would in our organization. And, and so this will take some time. And again, it's not done in silos. This is done with red and blue teams working together. This is an example of APT33, Iranian threat group, been around since 2013, targeted US, Saudi Arabia, South Korea. They have interest in aviation and energy sectors. So again, what you wanna do is come in, understand your vertical, search within MITRE to, to look at the threat groups or identify the threat groups, the tooling that might be associated to your vertical, and then start building out your adversarial simulation or emulation plan and then start testing your capabilities. Now, this is another example of APT33, and you can see it's a little bit different than what we saw previously.